After his foray as director in 2013's Firestorm starring Andy Lau, scriptwriter Alan Yoon returns once again with his latest feature film, The Rookies. From a script written by Yoon himself, The Rookies is a spy caper high on comedy with sprinkling of action, aided by foreign locations and an extended guest appearance from Mila Jovovich. Released in only a select few cinemas, The Rookies made little impact in the Chinese box office. So for the story, uh, Zhou Feng is an internet sensation who fans adore him for his extreme stunt antics. His latest stunt involves a two-man race up a high-rise building or the while live streaming. Due to a mishap in his latest stunt, he ends up in the middle of a black market exchange of deadly weapons. Fortunately for Zhao, super spy Bruce crashes in to stop the transaction. Bruce decides to recruit Zhao in joining their espionage organization, sending Zhao to Budapest with the hopes of stopping a terrorist group led by Iron Fist, who intends to release a deadly toxin upon the world. Miu Yin, a bipolar cop that now resides in the last department that is willing to accept her, is sick of her inept department and chief, so she ventures to pursue Zhao after witnessing his live stream. Miu Yin lands in Budapest and joins forces with Zhao, as well as lifelong friend Ding Shang and LV in an attempt to stop the evil Iron Fist. The name Alan Yu may not be instantly recognisable, but he is an accomplished scriptwriter, having penned a script for Jackie Chan's New Police Story, Robbie Hood, Shaolin, and the highly acclaimed Monster Hunt. His previous directional feature Firestorm was a commercial success that hinted at a bright future ahead for Yuan. Though The Rookies is not a complete mess of a film, it fails to successfully meld all its ingredients into a logical and cohesive product, demonstrated Yuan's scattered gun approach and inability to juggle multiple elements. Yet fun can be derived from the film as it is spontaneous and randomness helps make the proceedings easier to sit through. At 113 minutes, the film moves at a surprisingly brisk pace, spending little time to settle down or in establishing relationships and characters, with a romantic love angle coming out of nowhere and never really convincing. The abundance of characters also harms proceedings, as Yoon has little time to establish a clear motive for the lead villain whose plan is generic to a fault, not too dissimilar to any of the early Bond villains, in which clearly Yoon draws much of his inspiration from. The film is also tonally inconsistent, and the abrupt changes can be quite jarring, with moments of violence that heavily juxtapose the comedy that played before. Legs get sliced, fingers chopped, and people get shot. A huge problem that the film suffers is that the editing is so erratic it can be disorientating. Even the briefest of gestures are cut making movements feel choppy and this also transitions into the action scenes. Handling the action is Stephen Dongwei and what is displayed is fun and creative if a little over edited. The film has heavy serving of action and there is enough variety to keep things interesting. The opening sees Bruce crashing an illicit transaction. The fight that proceeds is a fun introduction demonstrating creative use of the environment with Bruce effectively disarming her opponents, weaving from the chandelier, under the stairs and along the walls, though the action is often hidden in some rather erratic editing. It may be used to disguise the fact that Miller is doubled for most parts. Midway we are presented with a car chase which employs inventive camera movements and highlights some great driving skills from the Hungarian stunt drivers. The finale ends in a Bond-esque villain base, audiences treated to the extended action sequence, mixing gunfire, parkour chases and fights. Those expecting long, intricate choreography may be disappointed, instead Dong utilises a combination of quick strikes and throwdowns, similar to what he employed in Heroic Duo or Macon operations. It can occasionally feel odd that our non-trained protagonists are able to evade and take out a whole base full of enemies, but it is the type of film where you have to suspend your logic. If you approach the film with the expectation of it being a live action cartoon, then it can satisfy to a certain extent. The heavy amount of screen animation such as floating on screen text to emulate live internet feeds and text messages all help to create that illusion. The costumes and sets are highly exaggerated with flamboyant dress codes and Lolita costumes lending itself not to be taken seriously. It maintains a level of visual appeal and can be fun witnessing the quirkiness on display, sometimes pulling random moments that come out of nowhere. Surprisingly, the visual effects are of high standard and that is important considering the abundance of it on display. A large portion of the film was shot in Budapest and the beautiful locations help in creating that visual appeal as well as lending it to an international feel. Lead actor Darren Wong's smug performance can irritate at times, but this matches his on-screen persona effectively. Sandrine Pinner fares better, much better in her role, fluctuating between nerdy to hothead with ease. Her bipolar tendencies can often become over the top though. Dave Lee McInnes, best known for his role as Raiden in the web series Mortal Kombat, does the best with what he can, trying his hardest not to come across as cartoon villainy which is not helped that his character is written as such. He has charisma in his scenes and it's a shame to see him in such a weak role. 
Shu Wei Zhou plays the oddball inventor of the team with enough charm and fun but his role is not established enough to give any real meaning or purpose to the character. Sadly, it is Mila Jovovich faring the weakest of the lot with her over-exaggerated performance and coarse voice to emphasise her level of mystery and forced coolness. Weirdly, she spends the latter half of the film sitting out in most of the action scenes, which becomes a little of a shame considering her impressive intro. Familiar faces pop up such as Lam Shu as the safe playing police chief, Lo Mong as the unfortunate colleague, Kathy Chow as the hip mum, and Danny Chan as the cool triad boss, all bringing some weirdness and quirks to add to the fun of the film. It does feel like Alan Yoon wanted to attempt too much, but never really settling on a comfortable genre. With so much rubbish that China and Hong Kong have been releasing of the late, the rookies don't quite fall that low in that category, but it does not reach the heights that it should have. Despite its flaws, there is fun to be deemed from the occasionally amusing comedy and often satisfying action sequences. Gotta do what I gotta do.